choices that we make. If you want to make choices in, uh, uh, in the most conscious way we can, we need to hold knowledge. Indeed, as stated <coughs> by Leibniz, if we have a problem, if we need to solve this problem, we need to hold the knowledge about this. Otherwise, all the possible alternatives that we have are all indifferent. If we project the problem of making decision to today, to information age, we clearly understand that if we want to uh, make a decision, we need to dominate the community. <coughs> to spread the knowledge that is the web. The problem is not trivial because today the coming of social media totally changed the way we enjoy the information, totally changed the way we acquire the information. We can be continuously updated in real time about almost everything. Uh, indeed, if we, if we think about our internet navigation, we deal with an exponential growth of the available information. There is an exponential growth of the value of information. In one minute on the web, there are 30 hours of new video published on YouTube. So what emerged, we can think about the continuous updates that we have when we use the social, uh, social network. It is physiologically impossible to flow in real time the information flow. Specifically, the amount of information we have to deal with has been calculated in 393 bits per second. This information is stored by our brain that has a physiological limit of 126 bits. So we uh, handle 126 bits, but we have to process 393. So the information that we have to deal with, it is three times the information that we can process. The consequence of that is called information overload. Information overload, it is the feeling of uh, stress, of confusion that comes from the fact that we have to deal with a lot of, uh, of information, a lot of alternatives. For example, when we have to check our emails. Information overload is when we have a lot of available choices and we cannot choose because we, does not hold, we do not hold the knowledge necessary to decide. The consequence is what Barry Schwartz in a TED talk called paradox of choices because we cannot handle the, ne the knowledge necessary to make choices in a conscious way. As in the famous paradox of Buridan's Us, where we have a donkey. The donkey can choose between drinking and eating, but it does not hold the necessary knowledge, knowledge to understand what is, bad, uh, what is best for him, for it. And it dies because it cannot choose. So it is clear that today we have to deal with a lot of information, but according to Clay Shirky, the problem is not the fact that we have a lot of available information. The problem is the fact that we don't have the tools to proper filter the information that is available. A possible solution proposed by uh, Shirky, it is to improve the way we filter the information. The research area was the goal of developing a tool for better filtering the information is information filtering. The goal of information filtering is to expose people only with the information that are relevant for us. A classical example of uh, information filtering systems are recommender system. The goal of a recommender system is to understand our preferences in a certain scenario and to provide us suggestions about something we could be interested in. Recommender systems are an effective way to face with the problem of information overload. This is true because Amazon integrated, uh, since a lot of time, a recommender system to help users sifting in uh, its large catalog of uh, items. Amazon understands what we like and provides us suggestions about uh, what we could be interested in. Information filtering is strictly related to another research area that is information retrieval. Information retrieval is substantially Google. We uh, put an explicit query into a search engine and we receive some, uh, as a result, as output, some documents that is related to our needs. As stated by Berkin and Croft in 1992, information retrieval and information filtering are two related research areas. 
because they have the same goal, and they have only one little difference that is represented by the way we represent user need. In information retrieval, we have an explicit query that is inserted by the user. In information filtering, in recommender system, we have a user profile. It is a representation of user preferences. The fact that we are witnessing toward a convergence between IR and IF is proved by the fact that Google is going to integrate into its algorithms some personalization. So, the research question that is behind this dissertation it is that one. We are witnessing a convergence between IR and IF. So we want to understand whether it is possible to exploit the research carried out in the area of IR in order to introduce a recommendation framework for uh, information filtering based on that techniques. This is the outline. I will talk about recommender system, the vector space model, uh, the evolution of vector space model towards enhanced vector space models, and finally, uh, the experiments that we perform. A definition of uh, what a recommender system is has been provided by Bork in 2002. Recommender systems are tools with the goal of guiding the users in a personalized way towards objects that are interesting for uh, help. In a more intuitive way, the goal of a recommender system is to provide suggestions. <coughs> suggestions about books, about news, about music, uh, or even um, about more concrete scenarios, such as I am here now in Bari and I want to know which one is the best restaurant I could go. Formally, the problem of uh, uh, providing users with recommendations can be formulated in this way. We have a user, we have an item, and we want to uh, find, we want to calculate a scoring function, a relevance function, that takes as input the user and the item and returns a score. Clearly, the higher is the relevance score, the higher is the interest of the, uh, of the user in that item. In literature, there are six uh, classes of recommender system that have been presented. And here we'll focus only on content-based recommender. In content-based recommender, the idea is to suggest items that are similar to those I liked in the past. If I have bought, for example, a pair of Converse shoes, a content-based recommender suggests me, for example, another pair of Converse shoes because it is similar, or another pair of sports shoes, for example, like. In content-based recommender, we have three main uh, features, three main key concepts. The first one is that everything we want to recommend uh, has to be described through textual features. If we want to suggest movies, we need plot. If we want to suggest book, we need summary, and so on. So we need content to describe the items. Next, the uh, user profile should contain some information about what user is interested in. If a user is interested in basketball, in her user profile, you have to store keywords related to basketball. Finally, this, given this representation based on content of both item and user profile, the recommendation is just a calculation of, is, is a matching, is a calculation of the overlap between the textual description of the item and the text that we have stored in our user profile. Here we have an example, I'm interested in Sports. So in my user profile that are, are stored keywords related to sports, football, cycling, and so on. So when I have to receive a recommendation, the fact that in my user profile are stored keywords related to sport help a recommender system in filtering articles about politics, because I'm not interested in politics, and suggest me news articles about sports. Okay, as main building block of our recommendation framework, we choose the vector space model because it is the most adopted model in the area of IR. The main idea behind the vector space model it is to represent documents or items described through content as vectors, as point in a, a vector space. The position that each item will assume in the vector space strictly depends on which features describe the item. The idea behind vector space model is that one, each item is a vector. The idea is that the um, items that are closely related should be close in the vector space. So a football news should be close to a sport news in the vector space. And they should be far from two news about politics, for example. So given this representation, we need to, uh, in order to exploit this kind of approach in a recommendation scenario, 
we need to represent user profile as well. For example, we can represent user profile by combining the, the description of the items we liked in the past. <coughs> Given a representation, a vector space representation of the user profile, the recommendation task is just a calculation of the similarity. The items that are most interesting for that users are those that are nearest in a vector space. So if this one is user profile, I will be interested in football, I will be interested in sport news, and I will not be interested in these news because they are far from my profile. This is the general model. Can be improved because with this kind of representation we have three main issues. First one is the fact that in vector space model we cannot model the negation. This representation of the user is only based on what I like. There is no assumption about what I do not like. And this is important to be modeled. The second issue is the dimensionality. As the number of documents grow to be represented, the size of the vector space grows as well. And large vector spaces are difficult to be managed. Finally, the last issue of vector space model regards semantics. This is a representation only based on a syntactical model. This means that if we, in our user profile, store, for example, the keyword Apple, vector space model is a, cannot understand whether I'm interested in the company or in the fluid. And this is an important issue, because if I'm interested in the company, I want to receive as a recommendation on something about uh, the iPod or the life. If I'm interested in fluid, I need other recommendations. So we need to implement some kind of semantic knowledge into this representation. <coughs> Next, another issue is that the recommendations are language dependent. So we can receive recommendations only on the items that are described in the same language I have already expressed in my preferences. In order to catch these issues, we propose an answer vector space model that has been presented already in the URAC since 2010, which is the main conference in the area of recommended systems. With an answer vector space model, we try to catch all the representation issues that we have in vector space model. But our main goal was to maybe introduce a node content-based recommendation approach. Let's see how do we uh, cope all the, all the issues. For modeling semantics in vector spaces, we adopted a class of models that is called distributional models. Distributional models are inspired on Wittgenstein's sentence, quote, it is meaning easy its use. The idea is that we can understand the meaning of a term, its semantics, or its relationship with other terms, by just analyzing how the term is used in a language. We have a classical example. Even if we don't know what do beer and wine mean, if we analyze in which kind of sentences they are used. So we can understand that, for example, they always concur with drink, uh, glass, party, and so on. We can understand that they have a similar meaning, that they are related, because they are always used together. Distributional models adopt a representation that is called term context matrix, where we have in each row a term, and here we store the context in which the term appears. The context it is the key of this representation because the context could be, for example, a document, a paragraph, a sentence in which the, the term appears. For example, if the, the context is a document, this means that beer appears in the first, third, fourth, and ninth uh, context. Thanks to this, this representation, we can easily find the relationship between terms. So it is, it's simple to understand that beer and glass have a relationship because they are always used together. In the same way, we can understand that there is no relationship or spoon between beer and spoon because they are never used together. They never co-occur in the same context. So.